Hey everybody, welcome to this edition of PFR Report. I'm Jim Schwartz, Director of PFR and Agronomy. With me is Jason Gayheimer, PFR Operations Manager. Travis Burnett, uh, PFR Agronomist. So, Jason, in our last edition of Ask PFR, we talked a little bit about the planner, but I know we didn't do this all by ourselves. There were a lot of folks that cooperated with us, that were partnering with us through this uh, program. Tell us a little bit about some of the folks who partnered with us to make this project happen. Yep, so the, the brains behind it are, is kind of Bex along with uh, Rich Schliff of Schliff Precision Ag. Uh, and then the bar itself was built. We partnered with Harvest International on that. Uh, we got their narrow row units on here, 10 inch spaced all the way across. And then for all the metering and the technology behind it, we've got precision planning on board uh, with a lot of their components on here as well. And they were able to help us get this thing to be able to, to change row widths and, and do the different things we need to going throughout the field. So, uh, And then we also needed a tractor. And looking at this tractor, it's pretty big for this size of planter. Uh, but what we wanted to do within our testing here is alleviate some of that uh, wheel traffic. And so with this tractor, it's got what New Holland calls their smart track system on it. And it's it's helping us not create so much compaction right there where the wheel traffic is. We've got some big floaters on the front and then the tracks on the back. Uh, and this thing does take quite a bit of hydraulics, so it's handy to have a, a big tractor on here. So we think New Holland of Rochester as well for partnering with us to help us out with this project today as well. So I know, Jason, that the, the, when we talk about planting multiple row widths, do these row units lift up and drop down? Do they? How do you change hybrids on the go? How do you change population. Tell us a little bit about the, the actual mechanical workings of the planter. Yep, that's a, that's a good question. You can do everything manually. Um, you can change everything from 10 inch rows to uh, hybrid A or hybrid B, whatever populations, and then go to 20s, 30s. You can do it all manually, which is kind of what we're doing today. And Travis is going to talk a little bit more about that. But then it can also do it on the fly. So we can create a prescription uh, through farm server, plug in and let it uh, just plant on the fly, just like a normal planter would. So today, what that means is if we're planting in 10 inch rows everything's planting all row units are planting we go to 20s every other one shuts off right and so that's how, kind of how it does it the meters turn on and off today if this goes to be something commercially available we would probably integrate an option to where the rows that aren't planting would maybe kick up in the air delta force kind of has that capability already uh, we just haven't built that into the prescription so um, that capability may be there in the future but for today everything is always on the ground with ground, ground contact meters are just turning on and off on the fly uh, to do it what we need to do so Travis, I know over the weekend you guys were doing a lot of planning. I know you were planting some fields in strips, right? And then I know you were planting some fields by prescription, by zones and, and varying the, you know, the, the hybrid, the population, the, the row width. So tell me why the different styles of planting. Why strips and then why by prescription? So for the, the field trials where we're actually taking data, we're doing those in strips. Uh, reason being, by, by doing those in strips, it allows us to cut that data spatially later down the road lots of different ways to give us the most flexibility that way um, so the challenge right now with, with this kind of technology varying row widths or varying populations varying hybrids and the combination of all those three um, we don't know the best way to to create these management zones yeah. so that's the biggest challenge that we're trying to identify right now opposed to a, a management zone based uh, prescription right. by putting these strips in it allows us that that capability to cut that data lots of different ways later down the road i mean five ten years from now if we we figure out how to create those management zones we can come back and, and cut the data that we're deriving this year you know five or ten years so we'll learn whether or not on the go and, and doing those different prescriptions versus the strips we'll be able to compare that data as well and learn from that Right. Correct. And, you know, aside from doing just the strips, we're also uh, testing the technology. Um, so the technology exists today and it works today uh, to create those management zones and to create those prescriptions to vary all these these uh, different variables, the row widths, the population, the hybrid. Uh, we can do all that on the fly and we've had success with that yet this year. So we're testing that technology and then we're also doing some field trial, strip trials to, to drive data. And so, Right. And so for the first time, just a, a few days ago, we've actually, you know, this is done. This is something no one else has ever done before. We've successfully planted multi-row with multi-hybrid variable rate seeding on the go with a prescription, um, which no one's ever been able to do. So. And what are we, when we're done with this project, Jason, in a couple of years, what do we hope to have learned by doing it? Um, we hope to be able to try to figure out what, how we can maximize yield by, you know, yield zone or soil type or organic matter and be able to place the right hybrid at the right population in the right row width to maximize our profitability. And so that's what we're starting to do this year with a couple hundred acres worth of trials. And uh, we're going to continue to learn more as we go. And everything's been really successful thus far this year. Travis and I have been out planting for about a week now, and this is our last field. So. Nice. So tell me again, thank our sponsors and our partners that have worked with us in this uh, in this 
this project. Yeah. Harvest International, uh, Precision Planning, Schliff Precision Ag, uh, Surefire Ag, Yetter was involved a little bit, uh, New Holland of Rochester. And so we just want to thank everybody who's involved. Like Jim mentioned earlier, there, we can't do this on our own. This is something groundbreaking that we're doing and we're really glad to be able to, to partner with multiple companies to, to have great success here. Great. Well, we're looking forward to seeing the results as, uh, as this year emerges and in multiple years as well to try to learn how to position better in every field. Uh, so I think it's a really good project and interested to see how, how it unfolds because it's never been done before. So, so check in periodically throughout the year. We think we're going to learn a lot through this project and even over the next few years and anxious to share the results with you. That's it for this edition of PFR Report. I'm Jim Schwartz with Jason Gayheimer, Travis Burnett. Don't forget to like and subscribe or comment below using hashtag AskPFR. Thanks everybody. Have a great day.